Hi, welcome back. In the last video, we learned about the relationship between exposure and ISO. We learned that as you increased the ISO value, the exposure or the brightness of the image also went up. Now there's another thing that happens when you increase the ISO value, which is that your image begins to get what we call as noise. So what is noise? I'm sure you must have seen it before. Noise refers to those bad looking grains that you can see sometimes in a shot like shown here. Now in photography, it's very, very important to avoid taking shots which have noise. And there are a lot of ways to keep your ISO down so that we can avoid noise. But we'll be looking at all those ways later on in this course. Right now, you just have to understand that shooting at very high ISOs will result in noise. In order to just understand this better, let's quickly show you a demo in which I'll be taking two different images at two different ISO values. One at a low, lower ISO value and the second one at a higher ISO value. And what you'll find is that the image with a higher ISO value has a lot of grains or a lot of noise and the image with a lower ISO value is relatively clean looking. So let's go inside and see this demo. In this exercise, we'll be seeing how changing or increasing the ISO value starts to add noise to our image. So this is a very simple exercise. Just place any object in front of your camera. For example, I'm using this banner in front of me. And what we need to do is, just like the exercise in the last video, set your settings to 1 by 40 shutter speed, f-stop 8. Again, you don't have to understand why we're doing this for shutter speed and aperture. You will understand that later. Let's keep our focus on ISO. So set your ISO to 100 for the first shot. So these will be the three settings and we'll be taking our first shot using these settings. So let's take our first shot. And what you'll find, just like before, is that because we were at ISO 100, we were not able to expose the shot properly. So this comes out a bit underexposed. You can barely see the outline of the graphic. So of course, we'll have to increase the ISO value. Later on, we'll also be seeing how to take properly exposed shots even at ISO 100, but that's slightly later. Right now, let's increase our ISO value to 1600 and try one more shot. And this time you'll find that the exposure of the image is slightly better than the last shot. You can see that this image is better exposed but it's still slightly underexposed. So let's take one more shot at ISO 2500. Some cameras may not have these exact ISO variations. So you might go from 1600 directly to 3200. That's fine. Right now we're just doing this to understand how ISO works. So let's see this shot at ISO 2500. As you can see, this has a better exposure. Now this image looks good. Now what I'm going to do is I'll be switching off one of the lights in this room that I'm shooting this image in. So I've switched off one of the lights. The change is very subtle, but what you'll notice is that if I take the same shot again at ISO 2500, the image will be slightly underexposed this time. Why? Because we are shooting in less amount of ambient light now because we switched off one of the lights. So let's see this image. You can see even though I shot it at 2500 ISO just like last time, this image is slightly darker because we switched off the light. So we'll have to compensate this loss of light by increasing our ISO value to regain the exposure. So let's shoot this shot at ISO 5000. And you can see that this time the shot that we'll get will have a better exposure. You can see we've regained our exposure by increasing the ISO value. Now let me switch off even the second light inside this room. 
and the same procedure will follow. That we'll have to increase the ISO value to compensate for this loss of light. So I've switched off the second light too, and I'll have to increase my ISO value all the way to 8000 now to get a proper exposure. Now you can see we need 8000 ISO to get this exposure correct. And just for the final shot, let me even draw the curtains inside the room that I'm shooting in so that my room becomes very dark and I'll have to increase my ISO value even more. So let's take my, my ISO value here. Let's take it all the way to something like 12,800. By the way, in the next video, I'll also be showing you how to select the correct ISO value for a shot straight away without doing all this trial and error. Right now, I'm just showing you this way so that you can understand how things are working. Now let's see this shot. Even in such a dark room, you'll find that we're able to get a good exposure for the shot because we really increased our ISO value. So we've got a properly exposed image even in a dark room by increasing the ISO value to a very high value. But the problem with such images will be that they will have a lot of noise. You can see when I zoom in, you can actually see the noise. But to have a better look, let's look at the different images that we took and see the change in the noise levels as we keep on increasing the ISO. This was the first image that we took at ISO 100, which came out to be underexposed. Now, an ISO 100 image is actually a very clean looking image which doesn't have any noise because the sensor doesn't generate noise at very low ISO values like ISO 100. But of course, it's tough to see that here because this image is very dark. But soon we'll also be seeing how to take ISO 100 shots with the correct exposure. But for that, you'll first need to learn the settings of shutter speed and aperture, which are in the sections to follow we'll be learning. But once you learn those settings, you'll realize that we can actually increase the exposure of the image by those settings and not rely on ISO, which in turn enables us to shoot the images at ISO 100 with the correct exposure. But right now you don't have to really understand or worry about it because we will be covering that in detail. Now let's move on to the next image which was taken at ISO 1600 before we switched off the lights. So if I zoom into such an image, you will start to see a bit of noise because after all we have increased the ISO value but the noise is not that great because still 1600 is not that great a number. Then we switched off the lights and we went all the way to ISO 8000 to compensate for the exposure. Now this image will start to get a lot of noise. You can see, I don't even have to zoom in fully before you can see that the noise becomes prominent. So this makes the image look very very poor. Now. After that, we really cut down all the light in the room by closing the curtains also and we went all the way to 12,800 ISO. Now you can see I don't even have to zoom inside this image and you can see that this image has a lot of noise. If I actually zoom into it, you will see that this looks very, very poor. So of course, the lesson to be learned here is that we have to avoid taking shots at very high ISOs. Right now, you don't know how to do that because we only learn to increase exposure by using ISO value. But later on, as we keep on learning about other things, we'll see that there are other settings that can help us gain exposure without relying on ISO. And we'll also be seeing how you can use an accessory called as a flash or external flash to gain light so that we don't have to rely on ISO to increase our exposure. And thereby, we can escape from this situation of getting noise in our shots. So we'll be covering all this in detail, but I do want to show you one shot, which is an ISO 100 shot, which is properly exposed, where we use some other settings to gain exposure and not ISO, just to give you a preview of how nice a ISO 100 shot can look when we zoom in. So let's zoom into this ISO 100 shot. And here you can see that I've taken the shot at ISO 100. And if I completely zoom into this, there's no noise and you can see all the details of all the ingredients in this burger very, very, in a very sharp manner. And there's no amount of noise. So if I want, I can take a big printout of this image without any noise problems. And this makes the image look 
sharp and clean. That's because it's shot at a lower ISO value. So from this exercise, all you just have to take away with your current understanding is that as you increase the ISO value, the amount of noise will increase in your shot. That's great. So through this demo, we learn that shooting at higher ISOs is not a very good idea because it results in noise. So later on in the course, we will be looking at better ways to increase the exposure of the image than relying on ISO. But this is something you'll understand once you learn about the other settings of shutter speed and aperture, which we'll be covering later on in this course. We'll also be seeing later on how to use flash to add light to our image so that we don't have to rely on ISO. But as of now, the only thing you need to understand is that shooting at higher ISOs results in noise and shooting at lower ISOs keeps your image clean. If you've understood that much, you're good to go forward. So I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.